Welcome back to Garage K. I'd just like to precursor this episode with a statement about audio levels again. So in this episode, I've decided to do two different styles of editing. So the first style is music with voice over, like I recorded the voices here with the microphone. And the second style is to let the actual audio of what's happening, which is really noisy, play with the voice that is actually happening and with subtitles, if you know what I mean. So the first style is voiceover, second style is real voice with subtitles. Let me know in the comments which one you like better and I'll continue to do it that way in the future. Just voiceover with music or real audio with subtitles, what's better? Now I've done my best to make the audio levels as um, flat as possible through transitions and things like that, but be aware that it's not perfect. Now when I was editing this, it seemed okay on my PC, but I don't know what kind of stereo systems y'all got, maybe something better than what I got, and the volumes are getting all over the place. So have your remote control ready or volume control ready because it might get noisy in some spots. I have a gasoline compressor and it is noisy, so yeah, okay? Anyway, enjoy the episode. I'll see you at the end. And it looks like it's going to have to be modified straight out of the packet. So it's what's unusual about that. So I was driving home from the station. The car felt a bit floaty. And I thought that feels like a flat tire. So I checked it. And sure enough, using this tire gauge, it read um, 50 kPa, which is some um, fuck all in PSI. So my first instinct is to feel around the tire and feel if I can find like a screw or something sticking out of an obvious uh, obvious way for the air to get out. Couldn't see anything, couldn't feel anything, so um, I haven't even jacked it up yet. So there might even still be a screw hanging out of it. Don't know. Find out next time on Garage K. Later. No, um, so I filled it up full of air and then wiggled the valve and um, yeah, the valve's ripped. So that's a very slow leak. It's probably been leaking um, ever since I started driving this car. But um, yeah, good video content. So let's film um, the tire change. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna take the tire off, which is gonna be a pain because these tires are hard to get off. Um, and then put in a new valve. I'm going to use these jack stands as uh, chocks so the car doesn't uh, roll away. Yeah, I wanted to roll away. It's off the ground. The handbrake's on, so the wheel isn't going to spin. I don't need uh, anything except a uh, regular tire iron, like a whatever the hell size that is. And it was at this point I realized I don't even have one in the car. So if I got a flat tire, I'd be screwed. Let's remedy that now. Tire iron. Yeah. Like a pro. I should have my own YouTube channel. Look at that. Wheel off. Gonna go up a little bit more. Wow. I just noticed something I have to show you. Gonna go up a little bit more on the uh, on the jack. Just that. Now you might remember from one of my previous videos, um, I upgraded the front brakes. I've just removed the rear wheel and seen the size of the rear drum. For size comparison, there's my hand. It's pretty small and that is the standard rear drum from a DA52V. Probably the same as a truck, although it doesn't, to me, as my memory sits, it doesn't look to be the same because of this uh, area here. I think this is actually smaller than the truck. Now, what did I find funny? Well, down there, I actually have a DA32W Landy rear diff that I was planning to put into this van for science to find out what the higher gear would be like with the auto. I kind of imagine it will suck because we won't just won't have the torque to push it down low. We'll get um, quite a lot faster on the highway. At the moment, the max for this thing's a hundred. Like, you don't want to go faster than a hundred. 
With this diff, I'm thinking 120, 130 will be fine, but uh, that will probably kill the around town drivability, which is why I'm kind of reluctant to do it. It's not a lot of bolts. It's probably a whole day's work to swap it in, and then when it sucks, it's going to suck to drive until I can swap it back, and that'll be a whole day to swap it back again. Bleeding brakes and all sorts of stuff. But I digress. Why was it funny? Well, the size difference. Look at the size difference. This is huge compared to that. I might go get a tape measure. We're going to measure from here to here, because realistically, this like swoopy part here isn't gonna be where the um, the brake shoes grip not gonna be part of the equation in my opinion we've got uh, this is 21 centimeters okay let's go straight across there it's tw 23 and a half so it's a full two and a half centimeters bigger um, than standard needless to say that will make a big difference in stopping so even if I don't use the gear ratio that is in the uh, DA32 center, it's still worth my while to move the, uh, the hubs and everything over if they bolt on. They should, but um, yeah, that would be really cool, having brakes that big. Even on the standard, uh, even on the standard diff and everything else, it breaks that big would really help stopping power. Not that it has trouble stopping, but if you've got this thing fully loaded and you're going in the mountains or whatever else, four people plus luggage in the silver van, I did have brake fade once. So yeah, every little bit's gonna help, isn't it? Okay, back to uh, the actual thing we were doing. We'll move on with the assumption that it's just the valve. Now, as you may know, when fitting and removing tires, you need lubricant. The lubricant of choice around here is dish soap. So, um, in a spray bottle. Went to use this, it was empty. Go to the kitchen to steal some dish soap. Dish soap in the kitchen is empty. So I'm already on a quest, now I'm on another quest. Fill up the kitchen dish soap, then fill this up with dish soap. Now I'm ready to actually do something. So I'm at the time machine, gonna have to turn on the compressor that's over there. It's gonna be noisy as all hell, which means there's not gonna be any audio or any uh, sort of walkthrough. I might do a voiceover or something like that uh, once I've uh, got everything moving. Okay, here we go. You don't actually have to take the tire off, you just have to push the tire down so that you can get to the back of the valve and cut it. We're going to use a helper arm to push this tire down out of the way. Now removing a valve from the front is a real pain in the ass, so generally speaking you normally just cut them off at the back and then remove the two halves. I'm going to use this because I can't find a nice razor blade. Remove the front and rear halves, making sure that you don't drop the back half into the tire. If you do that, you're going to have a very bad time. 
Now you really want to lube the crap out of this. And soap probably won't do it. So we're going to use this. This is Astro Products Tire Bead Cream. Now you want to take the cap off and remove the valve. Then you're going to want a tool. This is the tool that I have and the way that it works is you insert the valve from the back, screw this on and then just pull and that pulls it into its little seat. But you absolutely must lubricate it. It will not work if you do not lubricate it. You will break the valve. Now if you didn't hear me the first few times I said it, lubricate the crap out of this. Now insert it from the back, screw your tool on, and just pull. Now there are a couple of other tools on the market that have leverage devices and things like that attached to them. This one doesn't, this is just a pull type, so you will need a little bit of power in your arms to be able to get this thing seated, but that's it, it's done. What I suspect happened is because these tires are really difficult to get on, when I was putting it on, I've actually pushed on the back of the valve and that's probably damaged it. So I'm going to make sure there's a lot of lubricant on the back of the valve and on the tire that has to slide past the valve. Basically everywhere in there. Okay. Okay, I can see that we've already passed the valve, which means if we put air in there, it should seal, and then it'll inflate. I wanted to say blow up. from the bead, it will make bubbles. There aren't any, I mean there are bubbles, but they're not becoming bigger, which means that I don't have to look at that. Okay, that so I don't see any bubbles coming up, which means that it's probably not leaking. No bubbles around the valve either, which means we're good. dark out here. <coughs> Throw that back in. Be sure to talk these up. These need to be done to 85 newton meters. 80 to 85. One manual said 80, the other manual said 85 I think. So uh, yeah, 80 to 85 will be fine. I can drop this down again and then just go click click with the uh, torque wrench. Let's do that. Torque wrench. 
What size is it? Uh, 19? Yep. Set this to... Eight. It's already on 80. Already on 80. Already on a quest. Perfect. And uh, that's it. That is it. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see what happens next, please press subscribe. Don't forget to let me know in the comments which style of editing you prefer, whether it be a voiceover or subtitles. Maybe you need to watch it again because it was so good you didn't notice the difference. Don't know, probably not. Check out the description. Never forget to check out the description. From time to time, I will leave things in there that are important or, well, important for you. So, yeah, do that. Instagrams, Facebooks, do it all. Merch. Don't forget the merch store. I'll see you in the next one. Later.